I have a new van. Yay! It's a bit knackered though, so we'll be fixing it for the next year, no doubt, and I'll be doing videos on it as I do. Um, I bought it about three weeks ago, um, and the whole journey back was about 50 miles, and the temperature gauge never moved on the on the dial at all. Um, so it could be a faulty gauge, could be a faulty sender, could be a bad earth. More likely, it's full of uh, air, or there's no water in there at all. So we need to look at that and sort that out. Um, when I actually bought the van, I, was, I took the water bottle, uh, filler bottle off, and it was full of nasty, horrible, green-looking water. Um, and I questioned whether he put proper coolant in, and he said he did. He just topped it up with water. I don't believe him. <laughs> I think there's water in the whole thing, so we'll find out soon enough. Uh, so today we're going to be dropping out the coolant, uh, we're going to refill the system, and then we're going to bleed it. Now, I know a few people have trouble bleeding the vans. Um, this is the way I do it. It's always worked well for me. Um, it's a bit fiddly, there's a few things to do, but um, say it's always got the air out of the system for me and I've never had any overheating issues or anything like that at all with my vans. Um, I don't know what the official procedure is, I never looked into it because what I figured out about 20 years has always worked well. So that's what I'm going to show you today. I'm taking the pipe off here to start bleeding the system. And what came out? regular old water and uh, that's not ideal for uh, a 25 because you, your studs that hold the heads in place and they actually go through the water uh, through the water jacket and they, they, they basically rust inside there uh, and I actually had a previous engine fail because of it uh, when one of the studs rusted through and snapped uh, so it's quite important to use decent coolant um, ideally the pink glycol uh, to stop any rust hello bag um, so yeah so basically don't trust what people tell you because clearly it wasn't telling the truth. I also know for a fact it never bled the system because uh, basically the the little cap on this radiator, which does look new, looks like it's been replaced, um, wouldn't come out because the, the metal work here uh, it crashed. So I'm not sure if it's just an aftermarket radiator that's slightly different or what it is, but basically this would not come out uh, with this metal work in place. So I had to get the hacksaw to cut it just to take that out. So there's absolutely no way he's had that out to bleed it. So quite scarily, I've driven back from York to Sheffield in uh, so probably about 50 odd miles or so um, with a coolant temperature gauge that was quite low on the needle and I suspect that's why. Now, I live on quite a steep slope here in Sheffield and yeah, it comes in handy for bleeding 25s at least. To bleed it effectively, you really, really, really need to get that nose right up in the air. Um, so the highest point is, say, as high as it can be. So I'm on a slope and I've also used my ramps, which were made uh, a few weeks ago, to get it a little bit higher. Um, so I'm hoping now, at this angle, it will effectively bleed. If you have it level, I personally have never got one to bleed properly. Um, so you just have to get the nose up as high as you can. On the old van, I used to drive up a, like a, a little ramp at the side of the road, concrete ramp. Um, and that was proper aggressive, really, really high, um, and it always bled effectively when it was uh, up like that. Yep, definitely water. So I would be catching this if it was, uh, if I suspected it was anything else. To be honest with you. Mm. So once I've got as much water out as possible, let's put our pipes back on. It's all a little bit fiddly. Now, if you guys know a better way of doing this, I'd love to know. It's kind of the way I've always done it. But I'm not saying it's the right way to do it. You have to put the camera down for the next bit. I need to refill the van with coolant now. Um, I personally use the pink five-year glycol. Uh, it's the best option for anti-corrosion. Um, it's getting quite expensive these days, isn't it? Um, so it's quite awkward refilling the radiator from the front. So quite luckily, I've got this old fill bottle and the top actually goes onto the deionized water bottle. So uh, I've got a little pipe I've made, a bit of copper pipe, which goes into the radiator. Um, and we're going to be very, very patient and refill the radiator from the front and top up the bottles at the back. Um, there's a little bit of water in the system already, so I may go a bit heavy on the, uh, the coolant. Uh, but yeah, let's do that. So, time to come up with a genius idea uh, for refilling your radiator. I'm sure you'll find a bit of pipe in a funnel or something, or a bottle. You need a bit of patience for this one. So, as we've been filling the van from the front to the high point, uh, and this bottle is now open, it's filled it back up again. 
right, as you can see it's just the horrible green water that was in the van uh, so basically we're going to release this bottom hose here just to get rid of the water that's in there the excess water and I'll keep filling until it basically runs pink right pretty happy the expansion has got plenty in there and it's nice and pink so I'm going to seal everything off again Oop, got my pipe on and the filler bottles up to its max line. It's actually a bit above, but it shouldn't matter. So at this point, to fill the radiator and the pipes and the expansion bottle at the back, we've put about 11 litres in. Trying to keep going now until it kind of gets to the filler top. I ran out of coolant mid-filming so I had to nip off and get some more so it's been quite an expensive day today um, but I do ask, try and support your, your little motor factors, uh, the little independents um, I know you might pay a few percent more, uh, a few quid more overall but uh, let's try and keep them all going We have to get it up to temperature so the thermostat here in the engine bay um, opens up and we have full float to the radiator um, hopefully if there's any airlocks in there that will help get the air to the front of the system and obviously the nose being so high the highest point will be the radiator at the top. At this point you need to be pretty careful because if your handbrake isn't really good um, your nose is up in the air and you're about to take it out of gear because the engine has to tick over in neutral um, so it's highly recommended you basically block the back wheels, chop the wheels up to make sure the van can't move. Taking no risks and my handbrake is actually alright so even so. While I'm waiting for the engine to go up to temperature, I'm just going to make a double check, make sure I've got no leaks anywhere. Um, I need to keep a constant eye on everywhere, so make sure there's no water coming out of any places there shouldn't be. So you can see the air coming out of the system. Eventually, the water should start pushing out the radiator. There we go, it's starting to run out. So be careful now because things are getting hot. Just pop your cap back in while it's all running. And you can be pretty confident there's no air in that radiator. No leaks, I think we're good to go. Just as a last note before we finish the video, um, just keep an eye on your coolant level for the day after. Um, so I ran this for a day and then I came back to it and checked and the, the coolant level had dropped down to about the minimum level. Um, so once you've refilled and bled the system, just check it after a day to make sure it's uh, where it should be. Top it up and then since then it's been absolutely fine. I hope that helps guys. Cheers. Bye bye.